Scoff laws. Um, I just wanted to open this episode with a quick disclaimer. Um, we actually o- uh, recorded this episode um, about two weeks ago, um, and all of this was before the kind of the whole COVID nineteen stuff that's happening right now and in in the world in the culture. Um, and we didn't talk a lot about that on the episode. Um, so if it seems like it might be a little bit dated or just kind of um, maybe out of touch, it's only because um, it was recorded before all of this happened. Um, we were also supposed to have a guest on that episode that we were going to record later, um, but um, he actually got COVID-19, unfortunately, um, and is recovering well now. Um, and, uh, so he'll, we'll have him on a subsequent episode. So if the format's a little different than what you're used to, um, you know, normally we have a guest segment, this one, this episode doesn't have it. Um, but as things move forward, this episode is just going to get more and more dated. So we just figured why not post it anyway? I think we had some fun discussions, had some fun entertainment, and uh, hope you guys are staying safe out there, staying inside, um, and uh, we'll see you when, uh, when we get on the other side of this. This episode of the Gentleman's Scofflaw podcast is brought to you by Patreon and the Gentleman's Scofflaw merchandise page. Go to gentlemanscofflaw.com. In the menu, click the support or shop links to help support the show. You are listening to the Gentleman's Scofflaw Podcast. Listener beware. Rise and shine, the liquor store is open. I ain't got time for moping. I best be on my way. Well, I still got time to save my reputation. Time to go day drinking in this dirty little town. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Gentleman's Scofflaw Podcast. The podcast for the rebel and the renaissance man. I'm your host, Jordan Crowder, and co-hosting with me in person, as per usual, is the Don, Donovan Fowler. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You know what we got to do before we get into talking, like we always do? A little bit of housekeeping. A little bit of housekeeping. A little bit of housekeeping. So, oh boy. I am smoking, uh, well, let's, <laughs> I am some smoking Evan some Evan Williams. It's a fl- I'm making a flaming Mo is what I'm making. Oh, um, yeah, flaming Mo. The old standby, reference. Evan Williams, Kentucky bourbon. I'm too close to the camera. Now it's in focus. The ring light is getting you get it. You, you see the label. You know what it is. And for those of you just dropping in listening uh, for the first time in a while, uh, there's a video. If you want to watch it on video, go to head and uh, gentlemanscofflaw.com and watch the video. Yeah, you can see what we uh, what our handsome mugs look like for reals. Oh, you okay there, buddy? This bo- these type of bottles are hard hey, to pour. This core. is a massive bottle. This we is gotta... we buy this to make Moscow mules because it makes really good um, with ginger beer. It's a nice excuse. But yeah, it, I, uh... I buy this big bottle for you, know, Moscow mules. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know what, Evan Williams. In general, I know the white label is better, but this is still a good, affordable whiskey. I always like, enjoy dude, it. the white label. Okay, so how much? I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, intrude here. How much did you pick this up for? Uh, fifteen ninety nine. <laughs> Do you know how much the white label is for like this big a bottle at? Well, maybe not this big. I think, I think isn't it just a, a fifth at Costco, like the regular one? You're probably right, yeah. Actually, because because I remember being, although it's so weird. It's I, I don't think it's the reg. I don't think it's a regular one. It's not like a 750 milliliter. I don't know, man. I'd have to check it. But either way, I guess I guess the you're right. Like for this, like yeah. definitely for mixing and stuff. Yeah, this is what you want to go with. But the one the um the bottled and bond oh, stole my heart. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Oh, it's so good. I'm going to buy some like, more. It's got that afterburn, you know, that's just like, that's just perfect for sipping bourbon, you know? Yeah. And um, what I'm going to do when I'm smoking here is some good old Seattle Pipe Club, uh, blocking it, plum pudding uh, tobacco. It is an English, what they call a Balkan blend. And uh, you remember how we talked about how McClellan's, um, Went out of business, the pipe tobacco company. They yeah. used to have a Frog Morton cellar. Mm-hmm. This thing, I feel like, is comparable. This 
this blend, and I really enjoy it. I got yeah, it for I, Christmas. It smells good. My brother gave it to if me. I, if I could smell right now, I'm still coming off this uh, tail end. Yeah, I'm still working on thing. it. So let me go ahead and light, get that lit. I, I sucked out the flame. How does that happen? Well, you must really suck. I walked right into that. Yeah, you sure did. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, by the end of this episode, somebody's gonna end up with a bloody nose. <laughs> You're just gonna. Hey there, buddy. All right. Um, you know, how was your week, by the way? That was pretty good. You know, just yep. uh, you know, just rolling through it. Still Lent for you. It is. We are in the midst, in the throes of Lent. This is why Donovan isn't partaking listen, in any of his debauchery at listen, the moment. Listen, not only is it Lent, my brother and I decided to embark on a on a sort of a sober October that extends for like fifty days past Lent. Oh geez. So, but you know, I'll so be- it's just going to be me looking like an alcoholic, pretty much. Although for the next couple you, of months, you never, you never know. You you may catch me on a solemnity or you know on a Sunday, and I'll yeah. be I'll be partaking. But um, but yeah, overall, it's going to be it, it'll, it'll, I'll be I'll be partaking of uh of tobacco. But you can do that, but not the other stuff. Not the alcohol. Obviously not tobacco when you're stuffed up. That doesn't help anything. No, no, no. No, 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 you know, no. I saw an old advertisement, and if we could find this, I, I could drop it in the video. Yeah. Um, that had uh, that had some sort of advertisement for... Like relaxes the lungs or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like it was like a cure for like a, like a stuffed nose or, <laughs> or something like Or for asthma. And it was like a, a cigarette tobacco ad. I mean... They used to really, I mean, well, a perfect example of that recently is I was watching King's speech and um, he said, um, and it's tragic when you look at it because, I mean, he, he was a chain smoker. Uh, what, what was the King's name? It was uh, Edward. Prince Albert? No, I don't think it was Albert. I'm thinking of the pipe. Oh, no, out. no, it was Albert. Yeah, yeah, Bertie. Um, but, uh, but ultimately, he was a chain smoker and i think a lot of it was due to one the stress of having to take on the throne when his brother abdicated but two his doctors were telling him that the cigarette smoke relaxed the um throat muscles or whatever really? or the vocal cords and he says that to uh to lionel uh jeffrey rush's character and lionel's just like the idiots <laughs> and then he's like they've been knighted and he's like that makes it official then yeah <laughs> <laughs> that, that is pretty tragic it's though, too bad i, I mean well like people you know people used to buy into that stuff i think doctors used to push that but it's like i mean at the end of the day there are certain uh advantages to pipe smoking yeah that have you know uh, i think like there are studies that you know claim that it it'll offset things like alzheimer's and like actually pipe smokers tend to live longer um yeah. well because like if you don't inhale the risk is so much lower yeah. there's still like risk of like mouth and oral stuff and like but it is so small that they say that the relaxation aspect of it means that your blood pressure is lower and you're like yeah. they live longer which is crazy yeah like that and the lic- nicotine is so much l- lower right Obviously, you know, I mean, as with everything, you know, it's uh, moderation is, yeah. is good. You can't be doing it all day, every day. Exactly. I hear yeah. we do it like once a week on the show. But you know what? It's also a free country. If you want to yeah. do it all day, every day, you go ahead, but just know the risks. By the way, I've got a Dagner Poker corncob pipe from Missouri Meerschaum. That's a great pipe. You know, we should have the smoking Dagners on the show. That'd be great. They make these awesome pipes, and um, they're kind of like... It's a nice little compact, like, yeah. that'll fit in your front pocket. Well, it's called a, a poker because it's designed to sit on the poker table and not... Well, my hand is level, you but better, it's supposed to just sit you better, there. You better be careful, or yeah. else we're going to have to buy a new soundboard after this. <laughs> yeah, so it just sits there on the table like that without, you know, it doesn't tip over. You look like Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park <laughs> trying to explain the <laughs> chaos theory with the the, yeah. the drop of water to Ellie Sattler. Yeah. You're, like, you're Jeff Goldblum. You're like, uh, 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 life uh, and, uh, finds a way. Uh, they're, they're here yeah, am, but, uh, but. T- talking to myself. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, have you seen that Jeff Goldblum show on Disney Plus, by the way? No. It's pretty good. Really? It's pretty fun. Yeah. What was I watching on Disney Plus the other day? 
I uh, I was uh, dog sitting for a Fetching friend, trophy. and they had it on their thing, so we don't have it ourselves, and we yeah. were watching it. It was fun. Uh, by the way, interesting fact: Jeff Goldblum's wife, yes, is really close friends with Johnny Boy's wife. No flipping way. She's from Montreal. Yeah. Weird. Maybe we can get him on the podcast. Perhaps. I think he lives around here. He does. I've met him actually. In Pasadena, maybe. Is that where he lives? Uh, I don't know. I just I, I went to a jazz show. <laughs> Excuse me, a jazz <laughs> show of his once, where he was uh, playing uh, piano, yeah. and um, he was good. He was yeah. good, and he, he was a nice guy. Yeah, but yeah, he he's a talented, talented fellow. He is. He's a very strange fellow, but talented. Yeah, I'm sure he has some weird hobbies that we can talk about. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 sure. I'm willing to bank on that. No yeah. offense, Jeff. I, we all have our <laughs> weird hobbies. Yeah. Um, one of the funniest things is when he played Nick Kroll's dad on uh, The League. He was like the perfect cast. Oh, I don't cast. know if I saw that one. It was really funny. That actually makes a lot of sense, yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, that is the perfect casting, <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, you know, now let's go through some of these little things we saw that happened this week. Uh, oh, boy. Um, one We're of just the getting things, right into the chatter points. Yeah, right we? into the chatter points here. Um, well, we might as well, right? Let us know if you like that, by the way, chatter points. Yeah, if you like chatter points. If you don't like it. We don't care. We don't We don't give a crap. We're going to do it anyway because <laughs> we think it's funny. Um, I like how we, I like how we, we like to promote this as a, as a democracy, but in reality, we all know it's a benevolent dictatorship. We do whatever the, we want to do. Yeah. That's how it works. Um, so, uh, this is a little bit of old news, but I thought it was pretty funny. I, re- I had put it in the show notes a while ago. Um, Garth Brooks sparks confusion. And, and let me just preface this by saying any news with Gar- Garth Brooks in it is timeless, <laughs> I think. So <laughs> there is no old news when it comes to Garth Brooks. Yeah. You could always, you know, pull up the, the good stuff. I don't know how I feel about Garth Brooks. I don't know. I'm I feel not- like he... like. So Garth Brooks himself well, has some good country music, yeah, right? Yeah, but yeah. I feel like his brand ruined a lot of country music. I like mean, the th- stuff that came after him was worse because of his like his 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 live shows, I think. Despite being a Kansas boy myself, yeah. I was never uh much of a um I was never much of a country fan, no. and I was never much of a Garth Brooks fan. I do appreciate country, yeah. um, and I probably appreciate a few Garth Brooks songs. I was always more of a Chris Gaines fan. I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, that's a joke for anybody who's actually <laughs> taking that seriously. I'm not a Chris Gaines fan. Okay. So Chris Gaines was the um, – you don't remember this? No. He was, it was a – okay, I'm just going to read you the description. And actually, look at that photo first off. Oh, okay. Chris Gaines was. I know a exactly what this is. Now. Chris Gaines was a one-off fictional rock persona created as an alter ego for Garth Brooks to explore musical styles far removed from his success as a, yeah. com- a country singer. Initially, Brooks planned to feature the Gaines persona in The Lamb, a motion picture which never. <laughs> oh gosh! So you know, I mean, look, we'll we'll throw to like a picture, but he's got the soul pat. It, it's emo Garth Brooks. Yeah, we'll, we'll throw a picture up. Like this is like what Russell Crowe did with his music career, or with a thousand uh, foot of grunts, or, or whatever. Michael Jordan did with his baseball career. Only he, <laughs> oh, only Garth Brooks completely did it under an alter ego. Yeah. Like decided he was going to go superhero with it, emo superhero. A lot of these country people that lean into the pop country always want to go like they want to be fully accepted as pop eventually. well taylor swift once she she did once it. well she did it but once she got out of the country scene she yeah. she said i'm not going back yeah and i don't know i i, I haven't listened to any of her music since i don't know listen to a i lot have a good friend anymore. that is a f- big fan of her music that um she's a swiffer I get is that what is that what they call her? I think I I think I once ran into a girl who called herself a Swiffer, and I was like, we can't be friends. I know she's talented and stuff, and he's a big fan, and like he's a guy that is a pretty, I would say, you know, he's a Renaissance man. He knows a lot about art and music, and an actor himself, and he's a big Taylor Swift fan. So maybe there's, there's something some, there. It's funny how sometimes, as you know, like as we were talking about with Jeff Goldblum, like weird hobbies and weird quirks. Like sometimes you just run into people. I mean, you know, granted, I've been there where like you run into people, they have a weird quirk, yeah, for something that you just would not expect, yeah. And you know, I mean, I yeah, I'm sure there's there's room out there to appreciate taylor swift's music Speak, speaking of which this hobby. this last uh month 
I guess it was probably two, three weeks ago. Um, I really got into Ozzy Osbourne's new album. <laughs> oh, wait. Is that the one where he had... Uh, who did he have on that? He, Slash played guitar on some Slash of it. Slash played guitar. Elton John a does new, a song with him on it. But there's a young. There's some young blood on that that I... Oh, yeah. The rapper that I don't know his name of. It's not... Uh, oh, is it Post Malone? Post Malone, yeah. Oh, uh, frick yeah. Yeah, Post Malone. My sister loves Post Malone. Okay. She's like all about Post Malone. And uh, anyways, I haven't checked out the Ozzy album, but uh, that actually does kind of make me want to check it out. So, l- like, we'll go off on a rabbit trail. We're, we're getting we're getting further away from Garth here, but don't worry. So I, be back. I'm more of an Alice Cooper fan. I've talked about him a lot oh, yeah, on the show. Great. He's I love Alice Cooper. But Ozzy is kind of in the similar vein in a way. Um, big showman. Big kind of showman. Guy. But people don't get about But the thing is, Ozzy kind of in a way, with Black Sabbath, started the heavy metal scene. Uh, you would know better than I. Yeah. That's your, that's your thing. Sort of. You could, I mean, most people would agree. I mean, there's always debate in music and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, I think Alice kind of always stayed more in the kind of classic rock, just kind of rap, rock lane. Yeah. But <clears throat> people always think like, oh, Ozzy, that's like, the, that's he's a Satanist and the music of the devil and all this stuff. What people don't realize persona. is it's the persona, but also a lot of these heavy metal guys, especially Ozzy and Alice Cooper, they're using the aesthetic of the devil as a representation of evil and as something. They don't use it in a positive light. Like in their songs, they use it as a as a representation of rebellion against God and everything. And yeah. a lot of the time in their music, it's never... It's never. It's not actually glorified. It's the media that tries to say, "Oh, they're Satanists. They're glorifying this thing," but they're using it as a like holding up a mirror to man and like what is evil about man and why why we we need a redeemer. <laughs> Possibly, I, I I like I said, you would probably know more than I because I'm not hip to the music scene. No. But I I do think there is a certain Luciferian quality to. Uh, most like rebellious kind of music yeah. that's attractive in the sense like, For sure. you know, like it's a symbol of like, you know, we're going to rebel against the establishment. Yeah. I don't know how, I mean, I, I don't know these guys. I don't know how much of a, like a faithful person Ozzy Osbourne is or like what is, and I mean, granted, like I've heard all sorts of stories in the music industry, a lot of like weird Satanist stuff yeah. happening. Um, but that being said, the one thing that always catches me off guard with those guys yeah. is to realize kind of how it's like that joke in the um, in uh, Wayne's World two was it or was it the first one where they meet Alice Cooper yeah and he's like talking to them about like the history of whatever local Indian tribe <laughs> yeah, was yeah. in the area or something yeah. and like it turns out like he's a major like history buff yeah and same with Ozzy Osbourne like with the uh, that reality show the Osbournes yeah at one point. Like he and his son are just like their their idea of like a night relaxing together is sitting on the sofa and watching the History Channel and watching like World War Two history. Yeah, and they have like these replica like you know helmets and weapons and all this stuff. And yeah. you're just like, what? <laughs> like you're Ozzy Osbourne. Like, I know. Yeah, but but it just goes to show like there is the persona that they put out. And it's a lot of it's a, it's a entertainment. Yeah, you know? for sure. It's a showman thing. And I mean, it's a design to make parents hate your music and that stuff too, and yeah, sell yeah. more records. I mean, I, well, and that's how you know, like, you you know that the easiest way to, to kids, at least even as you're extending your career into your adulthood, yeah. is to just encourage the rebellion and, and yeah. continue on with that. And that's kind of the spirit of the thing, which I have a, I have a respect for that which, sense of rebellion as well. Which I will say, if you listen to a new Ozzy album, it's very remorseful and it's very reflective on his life. Like it's dark. Yeah. But it's like he's been through some shit and you could tell like listening to the lyrics of the song like That's that there's some regrets in his life and mm-hmm. he's discovered this kind of new path and stuff. And it's really cool to listen to. If you guys are fans of Black Sabbath or you know I'm I'm early I'm Ozzy Osbourne. Out now. That's cool. That's I like I like the I mean yeah, it's great to see how these guys develop and they, you know, because they are I mean Ozzy and, and guys like that, they are artists. Yeah. You know. And there's songs on there that sound like they could be Alice Cooper ballads from like the 70s, mm. from like the mid 70s. 
Well, you can tell they influence each other. Alice Cooper thinks that the worst thing Ozzy ever did was do the Osbournes because he destroyed the mystique yeah, of that his is a little, thing. But that is but, kind of that. Like, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> that is a little, uh, th- th- there's some truth to that. Because yeah. I remember that was like, that was how my generation, uh, our generation, yeah. related to Ozzy. was yeah. like, oh, he's just this bumbling stoner. It's true, and he was like for a while he was he was struggling with drugs and alcohol and prescription meds and stuff. He's been yeah. clean for a couple of years now. That's good. And married to the same woman for a long time. Um, oh, but, Sharon. Yeah, oh, Sharon. Oh, Sharon. Uh, but yeah, so it's I don't know. It's it's definitely worth a listen, especially if you like hard rock. I'm I've always been a hard rock fan of all the different genres within rock. But um, you heard it here first. And I I've never been a huge Ozzy Osbourne fan until like this last year. I've just gotten into a lot of classic rock and realized that like I always thought I didn't like metal, and then I listened to a lot of old like stuff that influenced metal that's considered metal, and I was like I actually like this music a lot. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I always loved Crazy Train and yeah and Iron Man. I mean. Those were always War the, Pigs is another good song. Yeah, those were always the basic kind of like like yeah. I said, like I like when it comes to country, like that's kind of my experience with the most music is that yeah. I've never really been like a a deep fan of any particular style of music. I just sort of take from everything, yeah. you know. I'm the same way, which is... I like what I like, you know. We'll bring it back to Garth Brooks here for a yeah, second. speaking of artists. Um, so Garth Brooks, I guess he sparked some confusion because he wore a Barry Sanders jersey at a yeah. concert in Detroit, yeah, yeah. which uh, for the younger listeners, Barry Sanders uh, played for Detroit Lions. Lions? Yeah, the Lions, yeah. Um, and uh, he was number he was twenty. Homage, yeah, to, to one of their great players. One of their great players. So he had was wearing a jersey out in concert that said Sanders twenty on it. Yeah, and apparently people on Twitter they saw this uh, snap. Uh, this little Instagram photo of him going out on stage, and they thought that he was <laughs> Garth Brooks of all people was endor- yeah. endorsing Barry Sanders for president in 2020. Well, it, it, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, what did yeah. I say? You said Barry. I thought I said Bernie. No, but I look, meant to say look Bernie. At, look at you. He confused <laughs> he you. He confused me. Yeah, like one of these. Uh, what was it? One of these comments says, "I will always love your music, but you must have down." You must have down a rabbit hole and swallowed a crazy pill. <laughs> Disappointing. I sure hope Trisha keeps politics out of her shows. Oh, yeah, oh I gosh. mean, you know, well, it's funny. He's married to Trisha Yearwood, I think, right? I think. I, yeah, another yeah, country singer. Yeah. That's where that comes from. But uh, ultimately, I, you know, the I think what I find most hilarious about this, politics aside and everything, because, yeah. like, obviously, that, like, you know, whatever. But I, uh, I find most interesting about it is that uh, – Garth Brooks, like we were just talking about with the whole uh, Chris Gaines thing, he has such an awkward way of relating to anything outside of his bubble. Yeah. And you see it in uh, his Facebook and social media, yeah. like endeavors, like early on, like like he was doing Facebook posts, I want to say over the last couple of years, and it was just really, really weird. It was like, it was always like he wasn't really plugging anything, yeah. but he seemed to be alluding to something. And like nobody could really figure out why he was doing like any of this social media marketing and stuff. Yeah. It, it was just really bizarre. <laughs> it's ca- kind of like, I mean, it's not quite on the same level as OJ doing, yeah. uh, <laughs> doing Twitter and thinking that it's Instagram. Yeah. But, um, but you know, it's definitely like Garth Brooks seems to be in his own little, yeah. His own little world. Yeah. That's his uh, honest mistake, I guess. At the end it is. Of the I but mean, it's still it just, is funny. It, it just seems like, I guess self-awareness. Yeah. Like might, uh, you know, Led to uh, maybe his base wouldn't necessarily be Bernie Sanders no, supporters. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. Oh, oh it's a, it's an unfortunate coincidence, but you know, I'm sure he'll survive. Um, I found this other uh, news article here, and uh, yeah, music. Speaking uh, of music, this is a music themed uh, episode, apparently. Yeah. Um, uh, so I'll let you read this, Donovan. I'll let you read this headline. All right. Ed Sheeran look like fugitive post fools. Uh, Ed Sheeran look like fugitive post fools news readers in hilarious gaff. <laughs> this guy. Holy moly! So okay, so wait, what what is the post? Because I'm looking at the. Picture that's a right weird now. headline for it. I, I I didn't read the headline. I thought it was going to be. So apparently, this guy <laughs> hey. went to a church down south. Okay, down south. Said he was Edward Sheeran. Okay. Ed Sheeran. I think it was down south. I could be wrong. I, fact check, right? 
But it doesn't matter where it was. I mean, Edward Sheeran's British, right? Ed Sheeran, yeah. Okay. I keep why do I call him Edward Sheeran? It just sounds uh so Edward Sheeran, this guy um got his picture up here. Very yeah. uh, uh apparently he's a Edward Sheeran look alike, right? I mean Maybe Edward Sheeran. Why do I keep saying Edward Sheeran? It's Ed Sheeran. My <laughs> goodness gracious. <laughs> Hashtag Edward Sheeran. Unbelievable. Uh, anyways, Ed Sheeran. Uh, th- this looks like Ed Sheeran on crack. Yes. Basically. <laughs> like, I don't know how much of a lookalike this really is. Because Ed Sheeran is chubbier. Yeah. And I don't think he has that much hair. Well, I think he's he he has the same hair configuration as this guy. I yeah, I think you're right. No, it's a close enough. Yeah. If Ed Sheeran was a drug addict, then if, <laughs> if Ed Sheeran was starring in Beautiful Boy, call back the last. Yeah, episode, <laughs> so we, call back the last. We, 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 this would be him. So he um basically this guy convinced this little small church that he was Ed Sheeran. Yes, and uh, he was performed for the church for twenty dollars in a sandwich. Oh, and the pastor paid him. I wonder how good his performance was. And when Pastor asked, when they were asked, the pastor like, "Hey, did did you not know that this wasn't Ed Sheeran? Like, why did you made you think that he would be charging twenty bucks and for asking for a sandwich plate?" And he just said that he thought Ed Sheeran followed upon hard times. <laughs> oh my gosh! So they let this guy perform for his congregation. Okay. Um, I, wonder how, I wonder. I wonder how that went. I'd love to see video i mean there's got to be video of it no right? i didn't see it in this in this uh i like how they have article. pictures of ed sheeran yeah. on stage and like side by side they look nothing guy. alike it, like there's true. no like, way yeah like i mean I, like you said his facial configuration but this guy just clearly is yeah. like a i think he's a crackhead he is definitely crackhead. and what i love most about this picture this mug shot is that he's wearing the hamburglar sweater <laughs> yeah, that's true is that i can't tell is that like a standard issue like prison thing or no, is that just no, what he no, was no, wearing no. i don't think, i don't think so <laughs> he looks like the stereotype of a criminal he does. i mean maybe, maybe he's wearing a striped uh t-shirt yeah yeah, I don't know. I mean, that that could be either. Well, it's just over a, his T-shirt, which makes me wonder if they gave it to him. But is it? But is it shirt? just part part of his getup? He, well, wait. He managed to wait. The fake story joked that the man had managed to convince three churches. Three that churches shirt. that he was. <laughs> That's bizarre. It's crazy. Anyway, wait. Is this real? It is real. It's going around. Ronnie Williams Jr. <laughs> he looks like he needs more than a sandwich. <laughs> well, that's uh, that. Yeah. The, anyways, you can check out this guy's photo, and yeah, I, I'd love to see some of the performance. Granted, but, like Edward Sheer, <laughs> Edward Sheeran, Ed Sheeran, you know, is a pretty like normal looking like every every man kind of guy, right? Like you would yeah, like if you not... knocked on your door, you'd think he was the Amazon delivery man or something. I don't know if I think he was the Amazon delivery man, but I, I, I think ultimately I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think he was anything like he's not a model. No. You know? Um but <laughs> Just looking going we're going back and forth between Ed Sheeran's photo and then this this huckster this guy. that convinced him. Yikes. Oh man. So well, if anybody comes up to you I mean he probably could have just gotten twenty dollars in a sandwich just for performing yeah. regardless of what he was Ed Sheeran. <laughs> I, I maybe. I don't know. But he got an audience too. He it's like he got the audience. best of all the worlds. He got paid, he got food, and he got an audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's enough to get you through the week. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, geez. That's funny. All right. I think that that's a, that's a note to take a break on. We'll take a quick break, and uh, we'll be back. This part of the show is brought to you by Phoenix Shaving, makers of the most excellent aftershaves, shaving soaps, and all things traditional man. One of my favorite products of theirs are their aftershaves. Phoenix Shaving intentionally blurs the lines between traditional aftershave and classic cologne. Each batch of aftershave cologne is created by using traditional perfuming methods, giving the wearer a high dose of quality skin food matched by the staying power of berry white. Now I tell you this stuff is amazing. It'll it'll make your skin feel great after a shave and the alum and menthol just removes all irritation and razor bumps. Um, they have classic barber scents and even more creative soap and aftershave fragrances. Like my favorite is the tombstone scent. It smells like leather 
tobacco, and gunpowder. Pretty unique. So ditch those vials of chemicals you buy at the drugstore every month and grab some artisan soap and aftershaves from Phoenix Shaving. Go to GentlemanScofflaw.com slash shave to help support the show and get some fantastic manly grooming products. Phoenix Shaving. Shaving outside the box. All right. Um, so we've been fact-checked. So we've been fact-checked, right? During the break, we checked out this article. Because um, when I sent put this in our show notes, yeah. uh, sometimes, you know, we do some pre prep work. You know, sometimes it could be several weeks in advance where we're thinking of stuff to talk about. I dropped this in. There's been updates since the story has been dropped in. Yes. Um, apparently, this whole Edward Sheeran thing. Live updates. The live. On, the, on, the, on the fake Ed Sheeran. <laughs> <laughs> was was all completely fake by a satirical site. They post this, and everybody on social media was convinced that this actually happened. So we're going to take this out of Chatterpoints and put yeah. it into our new segment, Fake News. <laughs> fake News. Um, you are fake news. You are fake news. Um, but still, nonetheless, uh, this this guy, this drug dealer, who, who the, this mugshot is <laughs> of, uh, does look like. It's a drug dealer. Ed Sheeran, yeah, that's that's the word on the street. Is that he's a. What I want to understand Australian though is like, because you and I had trouble thinking that he was the the Ed Sheeran. Like he doesn't look that people would mistake him for Ed Sheeran. So I guess I many know. other people. Although are. this is a thing, it's happened throughout like throughout history. Um, no, but I mean there there are instances of people going to pre-internet like going to uh to people and claiming oh i'm the son of you know yeah. uh, like dom deloise i think do you, do, you, do you know who dom deloise, deloise uh, was yes kind uh, of a big uh he was like a big comic yeah yeah uh, like you know had a beard very very jovial like you know yeah. people loved him some guy uh conned a bunch of people out of like you know, enormous amounts of money convincing them that he was Don, Dom DeLuise's son. That's crazy. He wasn't even claiming to be Dom DeLuise. But who would give like, him money for being Dom DeLuise's son? Well, I, I mean, ultimately, I think it's the sort of thing where it's like, if you can convince people that you have some connection to fame and you have a, like a, I don't want to say a winning personality, but like <laughs> that sociopathic charm, yeah. you're going to be able to, you know, get them to, you know, social engineer them to, to, to get you. Because people want to feel important when yeah. they think, oh, I'm friends with the son of, you know, this big star, you yeah. know. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm just, you know, in town for a little while. I just need some cash to get by, you know, yeah. a place to stay. Like, it's, you know, I, I feel like there's been a couple cases of that. I'll do some research on it and I'll... <laughs> I'll, I'll get like a list of of this of this con because it is a thing. Yeah, but that's probably where this this website was coming from with it. Oh, jeez, that's hilarious. All right, well, um, so that was an update, you know, on that story. <laughs> yeah, two seconds later, we both we both looked at each other. We were like. I, is this story even yeah. real? And then, like, we scrolled up and read the intro. <laughs> so, thank God. Yeah, <laughs> gentlemen, Scofflot Podcast, the first place you come for news. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> also, not too late to join the giveaway. <laughs> Let's see if this will show up on camera. Some, it's a map. It's a map. It's a map with. Uh, it's a map. We got to yeah, adjust the lighting it's a map. here. It's we, a map. Maybe I just it's need to wait map. long it's enough before it shows up. So it's uh, we'll post a picture. Agarta, use your imagination. Go to go to our Twitter profile, our uh, Instagram profile, I mean, and click the image. It's not really about how it looks; it's about how it smells. Exactly. But the you know the bottle does uh, does help sell the uh, and how it feels on your face badge. after you shave because it feels good. It feels cool. Um, I bet you. You know what? Bet you if you shaved your balls, this stuff would be a good soothing uh, option for I, you too. I would not. I'm not gonna say. I I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I I can guarantee you. I'm I'm gonna take a wild <laughs> guess here. I uh, not from experience. You don't think that the cooling aspect would be like uh, would not, like would, gold bond medication? I, I don't powder? think. I I don't think. I don't think the the feeling of the face will transfer down oh. south. Speaking of down south, I don't think it's gonna. I uh, well, we talked about this. I think on the you be, episode, you, you better have some soothing, <laughs> like some sort of soothing bomb. Just never try and shave your nether regions with a straight razor. 
Yeah, not a good idea. Not a good idea. Yeah, in fact... Uh, Unless you want to have a mess. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to <laughs> spill your sack want, out on I, the counter. I don't want... <laughs> I don't want, I don't want to think about this. Sorry, no Douglas. This is Douglas's sponsored segment, and we're talking yeah, about, we're talking uh, about cutting this. open your. Um, all right, nobody wants to hear this. <laughs> People want to support the show, Donovan. Gracious. How can they do um, it? Um, please support us uh, by contributing uh, with reviews and feedback via Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. iTunes reviews are great for yeah. us. Um, on top on that topic of where you can listen. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher. Um, most likely not SoundCloud because apparently it's going under. <laughs> you, you heard it here first. Here we go. We started a rumor that SoundCloud <laughs> yeah. is going under. But, uh, but ultimately, uh, yeah, you can also support us on Patreon. You can buy some of our merch. We've got uh, flip-flops. We've got mugs. Uh, mugs. Pint We've glasses. Pint glasses. T-shirts. We've got lots of manly uh, and... And just personable items. By, by the way, if there's any quotes or things that we repeat on the podcast that you'd like on a T-shirt, go over to gentlemanscofflaw.com, click the contact page, and let us know. We could design that T-shirt. Yeah, exactly. It'd be a fun, fun thing. We don't know what you want. I mean, you know, we all need T-shirts that we can just beat the hell out of and wear at the yeah. gym and such. Yeah, and pretty could, much. That could be your T-shirt. I need some new T-shirts. I've got some. I got some old, really. Dank T-shirts that need replacing. Maybe we should just replace them with all gentlemen's cough lot T-shirts. It wouldn't be a bad idea. You'd be the best looking guy on the block. <laughs> all right. Uh, and on that note, Donovan, you are a gentleman and a scoff lot, my friend. You as well, sir. All right. You guys have a great week. This has been the Gentleman's Scoff Law Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. Visit us on the interwebs at gentlemanscofflaw.com. Captain says, his ice on the river, we ain't getting home if we don't break through. So damn cold, I can't help but shiver. Rise and shine, we got work to do. Hey! So damn